Welcome back, his army, to another episode of We Are One. October 28th, 1978, on TV. Well, I mean, the obvious question is, like, why would you decide to make a, a TV movie? Like, how'd that come about? Because Hanna-Barbera had offered us a lot of money, and my manager thought it was a great idea. If you talk to Paul and Gene about the movie, they both hate it. As far as I'm concerned, I think it's campy, funny. You know, if you're a Kiss fan, you're gonna enjoy the film. Can you describe the plot of Kiss Meets the Fan in the Park as best as you can? I have no idea what that movie's about. <laughs> I, I know there were four alternative KISS robots that, mm -hmm. that this evil scientist, and you know, that was shot at Magic Mountain, incidentally. And he had a secret workshop there. I mean, I was loaded through half of the movie. <laughs> so I didn't even know what was going on at the time. But uh, you I know, luck, luckily I had cue cards and uh, <laughs> Yeah, I, I was pretty good at, at hiding. Uh, I didn't drink too much when I knew I had a scene, important scene. One of the guys on the set was a cocaine dealer. I'm not gonna mention any names. Okay. But you know, he used to keep cocaine in his hat and come to my trailer. I'm not gonna lie because I've been sober 12 years. You know, we're only as sick as our secrets. Mm -hmm. So uh, back th in those days, yeah, I do a little coke. If I drank too much, which would give me a little pick me up, and then I'd be ready for the scene. Didn't you have some beef with the, either the producers or the scriptwriters because they didn't do at first a lot of lines for you? You had like no lines at first or something. They just had you saying "ack" a bunch of times. No, what originally had happened, whoever wrote the script didn't give me lines because everybody in the band was supposed to get a phone call talking about what kind of uh, personality they were and what would they want to say or so something like that. I don't know, I missed the call or something happened. And I think Bill O'Coin said, well, you know, Ace likes to say, ah! <laughs> so, so I got the script and, you know, everybody's got lines except me. So I walked into Bill O'Coin's office. I said, you better rewrite this because I want some lines. Yeah. And they did. So what was your favorite line that you had in the, in the movie? Do you remember? It was at the end of the day and we were shooting indoors. Peter was having a big problem saying the word talisman. You know, those things that were in the red mm -hmm. box. It got to the point where he couldn't say it. And I would crack up. We did 25 takes. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, the producer said, Ace, you take the line. And I did it. I wanted to ask you another question about Kiss Me's Stand in the Park as you were talking about Peter Chris's lines. I thought his voice, wasn't his voice dubbed by another actor in the movie? Yeah. What happened was uh, after, you know, post, the post-production on that film, they realized the problem he had with that one line, there was more imperfections. And, you know, it was, it was a production call. We had nothing to do with it. Mm -hmm. But they actually replaced Peter's voice in the whole film. I would have been really pissed off if it was me. Yeah. But I know how to speak, <laughs> luckily, <laughs> even though I'm from the Bronx. <laughs> Was he upset, Peter Chris? When you know, I never um, really talked to him about it. I, I, I'm sure he was. To be honest with you, you know, Peter at the time was as loaded as me, if not more, and uh, he may not even have known for a while. <laughs> but uh, you know, I mean, the guy that they got to dub his voice, you know, was pretty good. Gene's brother was an only child. Easy, Catman. They are serious. And they've got guns. Uh, what were some of the lines I had? Remember when we were locked inside the bars? Mm-hmm. I think I said something like, I'll get us out of here, and I went like that, <laughs> and we disappeared and were transported to another place. <laughs> and then we had a fight with monsters. I, I don't know, we had a lot of fights in that movie. There's at least three. Yeah, luckily nobody got hurt. I know for a while you, you kind of disavowed it or weren't thrilled with it or you know weren't proud of it or whatever but I think time it's become a cult classic I never really had any negative feelings about the film I thought it was funny I laughed at some of the scenes I cringed at some of the scenes <laughs> but you know I was intelligent and smart enough to realize that it was what it was it was just a silly rock and roll movie that was designed for kiss fans it wasn't you know love story <laughs> I mean, come on, we're superheroes, we got comic books out. You know, how serious can you take Kiss? Paul and Gene, you know, they, they were always so serious. Maybe it's because they weren't loaded, you know? <laughs> Neither of those guys drank at the drug. The whole roller coaster ride of Kiss to me was just like this jolly, crazy ride where I'm wearing makeup and dressed up as a superhero, playing guitar and having fun and meeting beautiful women along the way. 
I just never took the thing that seriously, even though we were like one of the biggest groups in the world. You know, and I still look back on it today and I go, wow, that was weird. <laughs>